Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into another edition of Deportes Nation. I'm Alex Parra. It's always a pleasure today with two very special guests representing the Houston Dynamo FC. You see him on screen now, Dynamo legend. I'll call him general manager, Mr. Pat Olmstead. First of all, Pat, good day. How are you, sir? I'm good. Just be careful using that the legend thing. That's, yeah. That's, uh, appreciate it, but uh, we're really stretching it well, saying that. Uh, no, I, you generally are, sir. You may, you're humble. You may not believe it, but, but in the eyes of many. Not mine, but in the eyes of many, you are. No, no, you, you are a legend. Also with us, technical director Asher Mendelson. Asher, first of all, thank you for being with us. How are you today, sir? I'm doing great, Alex. Thanks for having us on. Absolutely. And, and Pat, let me start with you. And let me set the scene for maybe many of you that, that are not aware of, of the youth soccer environment. One of the, and I believe this is consistent with most MLS clubs, uh, Pat, is, is the need for a youth academy. And a youth academy is the way I see it, certainly in Houston history, has been the best of the best. The best teams from local clubs being selected to be part of the Dynamo Academy program, which is one thing. First of all, am I, am I on track that, that the Dynamo Academy is an important part of the Dynamo FC organization? Yes, it is. And I think, uh, uh, just, just to clarify, too, you said uh, the best teams. We're looking for the best players uh, to make up as essentially one team per per age group that, we are, that we're running. But uh, essentially exactly what you were saying is that hopefully we're finding the best players here. And I think that's a good place to start in terms of whether we are doing that or not. But um, that's certainly our goal and our target here, here with the club. In, in the quest to do that, uh, Pat, since, since day one of the Dynamo Academy being established, there have been, at least from my perspective in Houston, clubs that work with, clubs that don't work with, clubs that complement the Dynamo Academy philosophy and program, and that's changed over the years. I, I, I'll leave it at that, for better or worse. And, and, and that relationship, talk to us about, since you've come in, sir, under Ted Siegel, how you see the academy working with the youth community is that a fair yeah, question? yeah i mean i think that's great because i it, what what's happened in the past is in the past and i think the most important thing for us especially with new ownership uh new leadership with ash and myself in this space uh, and others here in the building tony vigil is now the general manager of the academy uh moving forward is that we uh you know we want to be crystal clear that we we no longer want to be in the business of uh, pay to play like we are we're running an academy programs uh and that's it that, that's all we, that's all we do in terms of uh what we're looking for with the players uh but what we want to become is we want to become a soccer resource for the city we want people and whether it's a you know a small little club uh somewhere that's that's just kind of barely making things working with parents that they're able to call and say hey we need help here with maybe some coaching education or someone else who says, hey, listen, we have some top players and uh, we think you guys should take a look at them because I think you're missing them. That, though there's all sorts of the range of uh, clubs in the city is immense. Uh, and there's a lot of leagues that aren't even very well organized. It, that, there's a lot of those players. Uh, so for us, you know, we're just at the very beginning of this process to try to uh, see if we can unearth the best talent in the city. Uh, and then, but the bigger one, I think, uh, the message we want to be clear is what the differentiating from the past is that we no longer want to be in the space where we're running a youth club. We're running a professional organization. We're trying to develop players from the academy that are going to feed into our first team eventually. And, and Pat, look, I agree with all that. I, I think part of the past is important in the sense of setting the plate of where we're going. And, and there are many, and, and for full disclosure, I'm a director of a club out in Katy, SG1 Soccer Club, and, and I've lived the, the youth soccer landscape for, for many years. Uh, we'll leave it at that. I'm not here to give you my CV. The, 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 the point being that, that the, previous, the previous approach in having a, a partnership with the Dynamo Dash Youth Club is no longer in place. Uh, I, I'm not going to class, uh, uh, classify what it was or what it wasn't. But it's a, it's a move. It's a change that fundamentally, Pat, is, 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 is changing things, I believe, in a positive way. But I think many clubs still and many people still believe that that association is still there. And for better or worse, um, that may take time to clarify in the eyes of many the new direction of the club. Is that fair? Yeah, and, and actually, I'm going to let Asher jump in here because we were just at a, a meeting with a, a bunch of youth clubs, uh, smaller clubs within the city. Uh, and with the, the, probably the biggest applause I got in the, the thing was when Asher stepped up and, and said exactly what I'd said earlier is 
that we're no longer in the business of pay-to-play. So I, I actually, like Asher, probably should be the right person here to answer this question. Sure. Asher, uh, uh, setting the plate, sir, as, as I mm -hmm. mentioned, and I was there at a meeting where, where you got in front of many of the soccer leaders in our community, and, and I commend you for that, sir, because it's a dangerous place to navigate, <laughs> and I'm being perfectly honest. Uh, but you did a fantastic job. If that's the, the, the meeting that Pat is referring to, sir, uh, please t talk to us now that are watching this and maybe that maybe weren't present, the new direction of the club. Yeah, no, I, well, first of all, Alex, again, I, I appreciate you giving us some time to talk about this subject because, um, you know, one of the most appealing parts of, of being involved with the Houston Dynamo is to try to work with the community to uh, to elevate the level of soccer and, and soccer players coming out of this city and representing this city on the national and the international level. I think it's the, tr the potential here is tremendous. And so, you know, when we looked at, at, you know, the state of where things were when Pat and I joined and, and when Ted took over the club, you know, it, it was, we looked at how do we try to remove some of the obstacles that are currently in place in this city um, to give more opportunity for the best players in this city to play at the highest possible level they can. That that's that was our starting. Point. And so when we looked at that, you know, one of the first things we came away with is we have to get out of out of the pay to play space because that's blocking the highest potential players in this city from you know from their potential. And and that's you know when we look at what this city looks like and the number of soccer players in this city and the interest in soccer in this city, it's incredible. Yeah. And so, but a lot of people don't have the resources to pay 3000 or $4,000 per year to play elite soccer. And so, you know, one of the first things that we sat down and thought about is how do we try to disassociate what we're operating here in terms of four teams that are playing at the youth level uh, that are, there's no fees, there's no cost, um, they're being coached by full-time professional coaches. There's a professional administrator. They can move from one field, uh, you know, in the morning in training on a Tuesday to the field uh, on a Wednesday right next to them play with our second team, which are full of pros, and they do well there. On a Thursday, they could be training with Hector Herrera in our first team. That reality exists now here in Houston. and But, you know, our challenge now is to try to – find the best players in the city and get them into this pathway. Um, and, and so that's kind of where what we've been tackling lately. And, and, and Asher, look, that, that's an excellent explanation. And, and again, I don't want to dwell too much on it, but there's going to be skepticism. You lived that at that meeting. And, and, mm -hmm. and there's an upcoming meeting also to clarify. One of the words that we used, and, and this was brought up by one, but multiple people, was the trust factor. Uh, the, mm -hmm. the Dynamo FC, to me, the Dynamo Dash, should be the leader when it comes to Houston soccer. Uh, Shell Energy Stadium, gentlemen, in my opinion, should be the cathedral to soccer. That hasn't happened. And the many questions are why. And part of it is that word, that, that there's a lack of trust, certainly from the past. And, and, and again, both of you, under Mr. Ted Siegel, have been very open about what can we do better. How can people have the confidence, Asher, that we're headed in a direction where there will be a trust building process. And I don't know how else to ask it. Yeah, I, well, I think it's fair. And I think it's a fair question because if, you know, trust is about perception. And and if if people are saying they don't have trust, then that's clearly a perception they hold. And that's, you know, and it's coming from somewhere. And, and you know, one of the, again, when Pat and I sit down and say, okay, well, how do we try to help rebuild it? One of the first things, the first thing we looked at was it's very hard uh, to trust uh, the Houston Dynamo if you're competing against a U19 team in your community that's wearing a Houston Dynamo logo. Um, and so that's where, when we looked at the relationship that existed with the, the Dynamo Dash youth, you know, you know, for the intentions of why it was launched, that we weren't here, we don't know, we can't speak of that, but we were seeing what some of the ramifications of that decision were were. Uh, we were living the ramifications of that decision. And so um, it's hard to, to talk about what we're trying to uh, put in place at the pro level when the reality of, of everybody's, everyone's everyday environment is they were competing for players that were wearing, you know, uh, for clubs that were, you know, had our, our logo on it and our name on it. And so moving away from that relationship allows us to, to credibly sit down and say, look, we're not trying to take, take players from teams. 
so that we can then charge them ourselves. You know, when we when we bring a play, every player that plays for us is is you know we don't take any money for them when they're playing for our teams. You know, we're we're at, we're we're investing money into their development, and so it's not in our interest to to try to take four or five or six or seven players off a team. We want the kid who's outgrown their local experience and who needs to be challenged a little bit more. And, and the reality is that's not going to be very many players on any individual team across a city with 7 million people. Absolutely. And Asher, look, thank you for answering that question directly and, 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 and making a break, if you will, from the past. And I think that was a, a starting point for many of us that say, OK, this is still there, but now we're moving on. That said now, Asher, you heard many opinions from many people at that meeting. I'm sure you've heard many opinions from many people in the last couple of weeks and months. How do you take all of that in? Earlier, sir, before we went on the air, I said, look, I've been in this city of Houston at, at, at doing soccer since the 80s, when I, believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, I was young at some point, uh, uh, I was still a youth player. And I can't figure out our city. And, and, and not, for, not for good. That's a negative comment. We should be coming together. We should be producing top quality players, men and women, boys and girls. It, it hasn't happened. To me, Houston is a strange nut to crack. I'll use that terminology because of the so many different interests. And, and, and Asher, I'm sure you've heard it. So many different approaches to the relationship of getting players from a youth club to the professional level. Yeah, no, I think uh, I think it's astute, and you've been here and you've been living it, so you know this market certainly better than Pat and I do. Um, you know, I think uh, you know a couple things we do know is it, it's not going to be easy, and it's not going to happen overnight. And uh, but what we need to try to uh, what we need to try to establish is how do we go and find the best players in the city? That's one. But the other part is how do we try to help them find us? Yeah. And so, you know, that was a big takeaway from our conversations, you know, with the, the local youth soccer community that we've been having over the summer, which is there's a lot of noise in the market. And it's not very clear for a player. If you're a 12 year old player and and, you know, you have a bright future in the sport, it's not very clear. But how do you how do you find your way on one of these, you know, no cost professional academy teams? And we need to make that's our job to try to make that easier. And so uh, we have some new programs that we're going to be rolling out that allow us to go out and, and try to find these players proactively, but also some establishing some spaces in the city that we're going to send scouts to and, and consistently on a, a certain time at night, you know, at a certain place and be there consistently for a number of weeks so that kids can come and find us too. Um, because I think the, the nature of the city is, I think that there's, and I, I hope, and you can correct me because you've been here longer, but I hope that if we establish some of these places, we may find some even better players in those spaces yeah. than if we're going out and scouting a, uh, two youth clubs yeah. playing each other on the weekend. Agreed, agreed. Uh, Pat, let me turn to you, if I may, sir. You have many responsibilities on your plate. I know you and I have talked about how do we start dealing with the youth side of, of, of soccer in Houston uh, specifically with the Dynamo Dash, F uh, the Dynamo FC, rather, the academy side. My question is, sir, you've got to deal with the first team. You've got to deal with integrating uh, new players. You've got to deal with results because your job depends on it. I I'm going to say that, and you've been clear about that. Where does this fall, the, the, the youth side, into the bigger picture of what the organization is trying to accomplish? Yeah, I mean, we talked about this actually uh, pro probably about a year ago, maybe even, a, even longer. Um, I think the the focus, the first focus was the first team. I mean, first and foremost, we came in, we said, what do we need with the first team? Yeah. We've made uh, 17, 18 player changes, I believe it is, this this year, uh, which is uh, a ridiculously high amount of, of turnover. And so far, so good. We're in a good place. We've got a big stretch run coming up, but we're in an Open Cup final, and we have some important games, and we're in great playoff position at this stage. So. I feel like that's that's snowballing now. We have like this nice little momentum going. Uh, the second piece was to make sure we had the support from a staffing support, uh, side. And we made, uh, I believe it was 13 staff changes as well uh, this, this off season um, and made sure that those are there to help support the first team. So we feel like we've got momentum in that space. Uh, and certainly in the last say six months or so, We've turned our focus. With the second team, we've been very fortunate with Nick Koba and uh, Kenny Bundy, the head coach. The two of them have done an excellent job with the second team. I think we're uh, 
we're in a good space there. Uh, but we, you know, we gave Tony Vigil an opportunity to lead the academy group um, as a general manager in the academy, and we think he's doing a fantastic job. And again, uh, as Asher had mentioned early, this is just the beginning for us. It's a start. Um, uh, and I think now our focus has pivoted. Now, my expertise is not the youth space. That's not my expertise. My expertise is the first team space, second team space, the professional level. Um, uh, Asher's expertise is also that too, but also very fortunate that he's, he, you know, he helped run MLS next. He has the experience in the youth space. And then Tony Vigil, as we spoke about, that has been his job for years. Um, and he has great experience. So we focused it, I think, on that and having key people um, in those roles. But I, th I think for us, uh, Asher touched on, I'm, I'm going to go a little off topic in terms of not answering your question. I, hopefully I did there. But, um, you know, one of the things I think for us is that we we focus on different things and as, we, as we're evolving as a club. Um, and this is an important piece for us. For us to be successful as a first team, and this is where I think they intersect, is if we're not able to start developing players from the academy that make the step to the second team, to make the step to the first team, it's going to be very difficult for us to maintain a, a you know a championship caliber team in in, in uh, MLS, uh, that's just the reality. To go recruit players and pay for them and bring them in all the time, it's very difficult. So for us, it's you know it it definitely benefits us if we have a in the city where they should be proud of saying, hey, we helped produce that kid till they were twelve, and now look at them; they're playing for the Dynamo. That's our player, and yeah. and we need to celebrate those moments. So so gentlemen, either one of you can pick this one up, but but you mentioned. Uh... Part, I think, this is my opinion, gentlemen, the confusion for many people, many families, many players. Uh, Asher, you mentioned MLS Next. There are several clubs now that have left MLS Next, but now there's new MLS Next uh, programs. There's ECNL uh, for the girls' side, also ECNL RL. It, 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 the, 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 how do you educate all of us? of the ser different levels because there's so many interests tied to all of these leagues and, and, and primarily they're financial. And, and when, when a league comes in and says, yeah, we're MLS next, what is the relationship of the Dynamo professional team and MLS next, which I believe the model for many, certainly second and third teams, is a pay-to-play model. How do you reconcile those things? Is that a fair question? Either one of you. Sure. Yeah, Pat, do you mind if I take this? Yeah, you should take that one. Yeah, so, I mean, the reality is youth soccer is an alphabet soup. And, you know, we, we, are, we aren't involved in that. You know, we, we, you know, we run a professional team uh, with international players on it. And our goal is to bring in players who are, do so well there that we're selling them to the top five leagues in the world, right? That's the world that we live in. And, you know, when we create this pathway of Next Pro, which is our second team, and it has professional players in it, and then underneath that academy teams that are playing in MLS Next, you know, for us, it's not necessarily about, well, we have a better league than this other place. You know, we want the best players in the city, no matter where they play. Right. And frankly, I, I, I'll make, you know, I, I would be willing to wager that probably the best player right now in Houston is playing in a men's league somewhere. Yep. He's not playing in one of the, he's not playing in one of these pay for play national youth leagues. And so that's the kid we want to go, we want to provide an opportunity for. Sure. And not, you know, because we have a pathway that is unlike, it's not a youth soccer pathway. We are not a youth soccer club. We're a professional sports club. We want to have a 15, 16, 17 year old playing at Shell Energy Stadium, you know, against other pros. That's our goal. And Asher, and and Asher yes, I'm uh, going to interrupt you because then the conversation turns to, so you're working with any club, any entity that can bring talent to that structure. It's not, it's not a monopoly by one club, whether they have name X, Y, or Z. It's not one league that, that is at this level or not that level. That's what I'm hearing, sir. Exactly. We want the best player no matter where they're coming from. If it's high school, if it's a men's league, if it's a pickup, you know, in the park, if it's another, if it is another established youth club, you know, we are agnostic about where talent comes from. We just want to try to attract the best talent into, into this pathway. Pat, I'll tell you that this, this is a, a, a revelation to many who were sold on the idea, I hate to go back to it, that the previous arrangement with the Houston Dynamo Dash Youth Soccer Club was the pathway to professionalism. That's the way it was pitched. 
that's the way it 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 was it was um that's the way it 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 was sold in many ways yep. and 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 i i hear that that's changed and that's revolutionary for our youth community to be honest with you and i'm glad if i am correct in saying that that we're getting this message out yeah well hopefully we're getting it out like you said i still think the the message isn't completely out there um but I think we're trying. And the one, the one thing I would say is, is judge us by our actions, you know, like judge us by our actions moving forward. Um, you know, give us that opportunity that we put that behind us, uh, the pay to play model that that's behind us now. We no, we're no longer in that business. Uh, and then judge us by our actions. Are we, are we, you know, setting up community courts in, in the right neighborhoods? Are we, are we helping, are we able to recruit the right players? Are we giving opportunities for players that they can find us rather than, uh, you know, maybe a coach or a club saying, well, we don't want to send that player away because that's going to hurt our team, but the kid's being stuck, but he's got a way to pathway to maybe get in front of, of people too. So sure. um, we need to provide these opportunities for these players and, and for clubs to feel like they're part of the process. Like if we don't get help from the community and the community decides that, Hey, we're not going to help them and that's it. It's going to be difficult for us. I mean, then the reality, that's the reality. We, we don't have enough eyes in the city. It's 7 million plus people. We're not going to be able to find every single kid. We're going to need help from the community. And if we can get that, then I think our academy can be, you know, one of the top academies in the country. And, I, and that's our goal. Yeah. It's going to take time, but that's our goal. I, look, I agree with all of that. So so give us a little bit. I, I know you may be releasing some information tomorrow the, relative to when we're taping this. Talk to us, if you can, about some of the initiatives. Give us a little bit that, that people can start turning to. On, on maybe some specifics. Uh, everything you've said is, I believe, correct, reasonable, and sound. Could either one of you share some some of maybe the details of how we get there? And, and I know it's an ongoing process that's going to require flexibility and being able to pivot. Pastor, I think you stick that one. Okay. Um, so, first, 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 and, first and foremost, we need to take care of our own house, and we need to run a professional again. So we have a new academy general manager and Tony Vigil who oversees the whole program. And right. that's very different than having a director of coaching because this, this is a professional administrator who understands soccer and who can run scouting networks and educational programs and a soccer club. You know, he, he can run all of these things. That's why we created the GM role to begin with. And so we need to take care of that environment so that when a kid comes here, they're taking, they're taking care of. And then the second thing is we need to make sure that there, there are real opportunities within the club when they do well. And so, you know, when you look at how we've been building rosters on our second team, on our next pro team, we've been leaving spaces open for players in the academy to get onto the field. And when you look at the rosters and when you go through them over the last two months, you see, you know, three, four, five teenagers from the area on the field or on the bench. And, you know, that's a testament to... The opportunity that exists here is that you can be a 15 year old and already be playing at a, in a professional soccer league in this country here in Houston without having to leave without having to leave your family. Now, now some of the that's not none of that is very new. Um, it's tweaking what already existed and trying to optimize it. The newer pieces are about how do we try to do more outreach in the community to find players and have them find us. And so there's a couple different ways uh, and programs that we're launching this fall. You know, first and foremost is we're going to establish a scouting network, a formal scouting network um, that it is comprised of former players who played for the Dynamo, uh, you know, youth national team scouts or previously youth national team scouts and other soccer experts here in the city who are going to help us try to identify proactively talent that they see in the city. Um, so that's one. We're going to have that group going out and looking for players on a regular basis. Uh, we have a full-time empl uh, employee uh, in Pablo Reyes, who is from Houston. His, his passion is this space, is, is trying to create opportunities for players in Houston. He, his full-time job is to organize this scouting network and, and to be out in the community himself looking for players. Um, so we're dedicating more resource to finding players. The other piece of it is, and we talked about it earlier, is how do we help players find us? And so uh, we've built many fields around the city over the last few years. Um, you know, we are going to establish a night of the week where our scouts will be at those fields. And so you know where to find us. If you're a player, if you think you're, if you're a player and you want to be seen by a scout, you can go there. If you're a parent and you think your, your, you know, your child should have a look, you can go there.
and you know that, that you can find, you know where to find us uh, to get an opportunity. And this isn't something where it's, hey, show up and you're paying a hundred dollar registration fee. This is this is a free, you know, this is a no cost program. You just have to get there. Um, and so, and then we also are establishing a way that people can reach out to us. So we're setting up, you know, it's not the most technologically advanced program, but we're setting up an email address where literally you can email us and say, hey, I'm, sure. I'm either a kid or I've seen a kid and I think they have a chance and just re and reach out and that goes into our into our system. So. Asher, it's tough to be all things for all people. I, I've lived this before, certainly not at the MLS level, but we've had professional, in quotes, I'll say that, tryouts. And yes, often it was you have to pay to even be part of it. Knowing that out of 150 people, you're not going to select but one. How do we keep people realistic? I struggle at this at the youth level. Many parents believe their son or daughter should be on the national team tomorrow. The reality, gentlemen, you've lived it, is that it's the 1%. Is, is, is that some of the truths that, that you are going to be talking? Everybody wants to try out. Everyone will be lining up. And also, it's tough then to say, no, I'm sorry. We don't believe your player is ready yet it, because there comes some heartbreak with that. There comes a reality check. Is, is the organization saying, look, out of, out, of, out of 100, maybe we'll look at one. And I'm just throwing a number out there. It, it could be whatever the percentages are based on the talent. But you're going to deal in those realities is, is mm -hmm. what I'm hearing. And, and, and I think that's where we're – sorry, Pat, if I, if I can oh, go. I, think, I think that's where we're you know, running a professional club is different than running a, a youth club. Yeah. Because as a youth club, your mission is to grow the sport and to provide opportunities to play at a very fundamental level. And, and for us, our mission is to, is to allow the best players in the city an opportunity to play at the highest level. And the reality of that is that there's probably only around 70 to 80 spots in our entire academy for players to, to, get, it, to, to get that chance. Yeah. And yeah. it's going to be incredibly competitive to earn one of those spots. It already is. It's going to get even more competitive in a, in a, good, in a good world. And that means we're going to be saying no to a lot of people. And I'll put my hand up. We're going to make some mistakes. We're going to pick some of the wrong guys. That's the nature of how this works. And you look at, you know, anywhere in the world, this is happening. Mbappe gets turned around by, you know, turned away from a Premier League sure. team when he goes on trial as a teenager. This happens, right? So we're not we're not faultless in this. Um, but if we're not even providing the opportunities to be seen, we're going to be wrong every time. Yeah. Pat, do you want to add to that? No, I was just gonna. I was gonna say your one in a hundred is, is probably very generous. It's probably more like one in ten thousand. Yeah. It's it's yeah. difficult. It's difficult to be a professional player, especially at MLS level. But there's that, that doesn't mean that's the only pathway. And I think that's something we haven't touched on here. Is just because a kid's in our academy doesn't mean he's going to go make the MLS team. But I think for us, it's important that if they they are in our academy, that we do the best to make them the best to develop them as the best player that they can be. And maybe that's not playing for MLS, but maybe that's going abroad and playing in the first division in Norway. Maybe that's going to South America, like Juan Castilla, who's now playing in Colum in Colombia with Deportivo Cali. So yeah. these opportunities, I think, are still part of our responsibility once we embrace these kids and say, hey, listen, we're going to give this kid the best experience that we can possibly give them. And if they can't make it, uh, so be it. Uh, let's make sure that they have a great experience and get to the highest levels that they can get to. Gentlemen, fascinating talk, and, and, and I wish we had all day. Let me, let me try to start bringing it together here. Um, many people that will watch this, I hope, can, can give us their input and, and listen to this. Here's another, I, I believe, challenging question. There are many clubs now, youth clubs, large and small, that have taken the position, look, if we're developing players, we need compensation for that if they go on and play USL, play MLS, what, what is the philosophy that the Dynamo FC have right now in compensating clubs that maybe did develop a player for five years, for six years? Then they find their way to the, the, the Dynamo Academy system. I, is that fair? And, and look, I'll say this, uh, and, and uh, I might get some nasty emails. There's a lot of Latino-centric clubs that say, look, we're the ones that did the hard work here. We're the ones that need an arrangement before I even bring you a player. That's the thinking. That's the talking. That's what I hear. Um, is that a fair question? It, yeah, I mean, it, Pat, if I can jump in. Yeah, here. Go, go, this go, is, go this is an evolving space, you know, because 15 years ago, you know, Jonathan Spector went from the residency program at U.S. Soccer to Man United, and Man United sent a check to U.S. Soccer that they refused to cash, yeah. right? 
you, you fast forward to today and there are compensation agreements put in place, you know, between, you know, MLS clubs and MLS next clubs, um, you know, with very spelled out compensation levels, you know, it's, it runs the gambit. Um, and so this, this space is evolving quickly. And frankly, it's evolved so quickly that, you know, Pat and I haven't had a chance to sit down and say, you know, <laughs> what's our club philosophy? What do we do? Yeah. Um, where do we Fair fit enough. into this? Yeah. It, it, frankly, it's, it's a bit of a champagne problem. Uh, compared to where we are now, you know, if we're moving <laughs> players for large sums of money and figuring out how to split that up, um, sure. you know, we're not at that we're not at that level yet. And so we don't have a great answer for you today, but it's a fair question, and, and I think something that we should take some more time to. And, and, and look, I'm not going to shy away from saying this: there there are players now that are seven, eight years old who are training and will be training, and, and there's so much that goes into developing them, their families, their commitment, uh, a youth coach, uh, a, 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 a professional coach, um, a, a position coach. It, it, it's, 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 it's everywhere out there. So uh, I know you'll develop that, and I'm sure it's going to come up, but, but it sounds to me, gentlemen, it sounds to me, Pat, like, like let's have those conversations. Let's, let's, whoever is able to help us in that process, we we're certainly not um, closing ourselves to a conversation. Is that fair, Pat? No, that's absolutely fair. I, I think, as I should said, you know, he and I haven't really even like just had a deep discussion on this, but I think we are open to any discussion from any club or even just from the public if they have ideas. Um, the one point I do want to make when you do talk about like six, seven year olds, and, and this is kind of goes against probably the academy stuff, but this is also myself as a parent is, you know, listen, in, in the end, I think kids, kids that, that when they start specializing at a really young age in soccer, um, sometimes burn out. Um, and I'll, and I'll, I mean, granted, I'll use an example of a kid who's now playing professionally, but, uh, you know, a good friend of ours, Josh Wolf, his, his son at the age of 15 was in academy was, I've had enough, it's too much. And that's all he ever did. And he took six months off uh, and it actually rejuvenated him, came back in and, uh, and actually that was a, uh, uh, the boys in Atlanta, which which one is it? Asher, not not uh, Owen, but uh, yeah, thanks. Yeah, so Tyler, Tyler, where he just got burnt out, and I that always worries me when I hear, hear parents, oh, I've got this great seven year old, I've got him training six days a week, three hours a day. It's important for kids to have have a life too and enjoy it. And I think, uh, it, as I said before, it's difficult to become that level. Uh, they'll get there, they'll find their pathway. I think giving them the opportunity to to that stuff is fantastic, but. But they should also be kids too and enjoy the process. It's uh, you're gonna have a lot of ups and downs in the process, be a lot of failures that you can learn from. But at the end of the day, they're, they're still kids, and, and if they're fortunate enough, they, they get to have a professional career. Yeah, no, excellent context, Pat. And, and that's not only reasonable, but but that speaks of the experience you, you have in, 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 in this wild west, sometimes we call it, of soccer. <laughs> uh, as, as we wrap, uh, Asher, maybe I'll begin with you, sir. What, 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 what message do we leave with today? It's a work in progress. And it's going to take some patience because we're going to make some mistakes along the way. But this is just the beginning in that process. Asher, if people are watching this and they're listening to this, what can people do today if, if they want to find out more? How do they engage with you, with the organization, to, to, to start dealing with their particular, uh, their particular situation, their particular questions, their, their, their search for more knowledge about a possible relationship? Yeah, so I, I would start by saying, and we haven't, it's it's coming very soon, but I would I would direct people to go to the Houston Dynamo Academy website okay. uh, where they can find more information. They'll be able to find more information about uh, the new programs that are coming, uh, contact information for the right people if they have a player uh, or if they themselves want to be seen. Uh, but that'll be the best resource immediately uh, for people to go to uh, and learn more about what's what's uh, what's on the near horizon. Asher, excellent. Thank you, sir, for your time. Pat, as, as we close, in the time you've been here, meaning as general manager, we've seen a change, a positive change on the field. This, I think, is part of a greater strategy. Uh, maybe give us a state of the, of, the, of the franchise at this point relative to the youth, relative to where you are. I'm hoping the team is in the playoffs. I, I, as, 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 great, as great as it's have to have Messi in, in the MLS, I, I want the Dynamo to win another U.S. Open Cup. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be wonderful. That'd be wonderful. I think, uh, you know, as I, as I kind of talked a little bit, about, you know, the first team is is in a good position right now. I, I don't think it's a finished product, uh, a lot like we talked about with the academy. We're, you know, we still feel like we're at the beginning of this journey, that we're on the beginning of the project. We feel like we're 
over a few of the hurdles early on, I think that were really tough to get over. Um, but we still have a long way to go. Like this team is, uh, uh, we're in a good position, as I mentioned earlier. The reality is we're one game over 500, and we'd like to be a team that, that is fighting for, uh, you know, the ch for championships, for supporter shields, for top in the division. That's where we want to get to. Um, but we, we have, uh, it's a good work in progress. And I'm happy with the people that we have in the building, too. I think that's another aspect we haven't talked too much about on the show. But we have some really good people here, and, and not just in the first team space, but in the second team space and in the academy. And I think uh, uh, I'm really happy with the progress that this uh, entire club has made. But we still got lots of work to do. Well, uh, Pat, it's, it's always a pleasure to speak with you. Gentlemen, if I can leave the door open for us to continue this conversation, I know it'll be evolving on the youth side. And, and we that live it, that are here, um, I go back to what I said earlier. I think the Dynamo FC, the Dash uh, organization, can be leaders, should be leaders. And I think that unites us. I, I think as I get older, I realize it, it, if we can work together, it benefits all of us. It's not about the jealousy uh, it's, it's about being a little bit altruistic, in my opinion, and at the end of it, we, we will all be successful. But, but I've been dreaming about that for many years, uh, and, and I'm, hoping, I'm hoping this time it, comes, it becomes a reality. Asher, thank you. Pat, thank you. Gentlemen, uh, until next time, uh, to you, ladies and gentlemen, that follow us here on the Fortis Nation, we appreciate it. I hope you learned. I certainly did learn a lot, and, and that keeps us going. So on behalf of Asher, on behalf of Pat, I'm Alex Parra. Thank you for joining us on this latest edition of the Fortis Nation.